Good day, spiritual artist. This is CJ Miller, your host of the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Oh my gosh, we're down to the last two chapters of the Spiritual Artist. We are designed to create, and I want to commend you for sticking with this program and keeping up with me. This has been quite the adventure, quite the commitment to your spiritual artistic practice. So let's read chapter 23 titled, A Spiritual Artist. Quote, Creativity is not a mood. Creativity is not a gift. It's the very nature of God inside of you. End quote. Dan McCollum. Chapter 23, A Spiritual Artist. My sojourns to New Mexico had opened a new door. Leaving my family, friends, and career in Dallas to attend yearly workshops had become a sacred ritual. It was the one time during the year that I put aside the details of my daily life, rented a quiet hotel room, and relished the silence. Each time I returned, I marveled at the flat landscape, the dots of cypress and pine framing the highway, and the magnificent color of the mountains. Each morning as I drove to my workshop, I noticed the changing hues of the mountain range varied shades of blue, indigo, purple, and plum. Each mountain seemed to take on a slightly different shade throughout the day, and I felt their eternal beauty. I relished learning what it means to be a spiritual artist, someone consciously present as I approached the easel, someone who knows how to quiet thoughts, look inward, and find connection to a greater power. As I mentioned in the last chapter, Virginia announced that she would be retiring and no longer teaching the workshop during my six-year visit. She had decided to relocate to be closer to her family. Upon hearing her decision, a heavy ache formed in my chest. This session would be my last workshop with this diverse group of artists who had become so dear to me. As I practiced art, I learned the importance of creating a sacred space when painting, and I learned to watch my process. I had discovered how to quiet my thoughts resist judgment, feel my emotions, and creatively interact with creative intelligence. I had come to rely on the incredible stillness of Santa Fe and listen to the voice within while in a painterly conversation with my canvas. How would I survive without these yearly trips? On the very final day, my art supplies packed and ready for UPS, as I stood by the door saying my goodbyes to fellow students, I began to sob. It was the end of an era, but the beginning of learning something much more significant. Yes, folks, I did. I cried. It was very strange, very overwhelming. Upon returning home, I unpacked my art supplies and set up my home studio. I feared that I would never again experience that astonishing connection to a greater power. But I did have one advantage. I had notes recording my journey my artist toolbox, and a copy of Virginia's book, Discovering the Inner Eye Experiments in Water Media. In her book, Virginia introduces a concept that engaged my thoughts. Quote, <clears throat> quote, when we design, we seek a perfect balance, a centeredness. Within our own nature is a perfect centeredness available to us at will if we tune into it. If we listen to our own pulse, we are constantly striving for that sense of centeredness in all of our life, for a perfect balance that allows, to move, allows us to move with grace, to be one with our surroundings. The athlete understands that need to center himself or herself in order to achieve the highest level of performance. The golfer centers before swinging the club. The tennis player shifts from foot to foot, seeking center before making a serve. The dancer must reach that point of perfect center before attempting the tour de l'air. These artists understand that while they must know all the rules and guidelines of their art and practice them with regularity, when it comes down for the event, they must rely on their innate sense of accuracy and their ability to feel balance and spatial harmony, end quote. She describes the process of finding centeredness both within the work of art and within oneself. I realized that I had been practicing this during my yearly retreats. 
I believe that this centeredness is the one true goal of the artist. We must seek a level of consciousness by centering in our connection to this creative intelligence. Ultimately, this is achieved by feeling the presence of creative intelligence, God, spirit, whatever name you want to use, within. It is accessed through feeling love, joy, acceptance, gratitude, and appreciation. I'm going to repeat that one last time. It is accessed through feeling love, joy, acceptance, gratitude, and appreciation. Unity spiritual leader, minister, and author Eric Butterworth details the same centering process in his book, Spiritual Economics. This insightful book chronicles the method of accessing your spiritual abundance, and I highly recommend it. He describes the process of centering as connecting with an inner realm of wholeness so that we can experience mastery. Quote, a person who keeps conscious that the divine flow is ever centered within, one has faith that limitless substance will find expression through him or her in the form of creative ideas, ingenuity, the will to work, and a security of work opportunities, end quote. Butterworth is explaining that when we center ourselves in consciousness, we connect with creative intelligence and receive an unlimited abundance of inspiration and guidance. As spiritual artists, our journey is never truly complete. We are continually expanding our toolbox and our ability to find center. One spring day, as I was painting for my home, I looked out the studio window. A light rain was falling, and bright chartreuse iris stalks were reaching for the gray sky. A cardinal was perched on the evergreen podocarpus branch, and I felt the presence of a divine connection as I applied the final strokes to my painting. I suddenly realized that I was slipping into the state of a spiritual artist. I recognized something even more enlightening. The state of a spiritual artist was achieved through more than intellectual self-consciousness. It was a feeling that I was experiencing. I'm going to read that again. The state of a spiritual artist was achieved through more than an intellectual self-consciousness. It was a feeling that I was experiencing. There is a physical awareness within my entire body, a sense of connection, awe, and appreciation. I could feel this presence throughout my entire body. Noticing my joyful condition, Izzy, my tiny Boston Terrier, flung herself at me with paws in the air. I picked her up and felt an incredible swell of centeredness, knowing that I am an essential part of all that is. Like the prodigal son, I had come home. I also realized that I didn't have to travel to Santa Fe or be in a specific class to experience my connection to all that is. I didn't even have to have an exceptional teacher. I didn't require cedar trees and blue sky to feel my wholeness. This connection wasn't something to seek outside of myself. This connection is within. This connection wasn't something to seek outside of myself. This connection is within. I didn't even need to be a painter to be a spiritual artist. Painting is just one way of practicing this state of consciousness. We are all spiritual artists, regardless of what form of creativity we engage. I slid down to the floor, leaned against the wall, and watched the incredible world that surrounded me. I saw and felt every point of beauty outside my window. I felt the beauty in the room itself, the scattering of paints, the mess of the brushes, and years of notes randomly tacked to a magnet board. I recognized the truth. I didn't need a specific person, place, or thing to reach a conscious presence. This connection is always available through me. This connection is accessible to everyone. When we co-create with a greater power, we begin, we begin by centering our consciousness. We create through spirit. Eternal intelligence and power are everywhere and are always accessible. The creative energy and supply of the infinite flow through us as us. When in that state, we easily access intuition and guidance. We can choose to compose music, write a novel, run a marathon, build a home, open a business, raise children paint a canvas, or sit and look out our window. Spirit surrounds us and invites us to come and create in a state of love 
at any given time. Spirit surrounds us and invites us to come and create in a state of love at any given time. There is no right or wrong in artistic creation. As individual expressions of creative intelligence, we simply must create. This is sort of a summation chapter of the whole book and the whole process and what it means to be a spiritual artist. And I remember that day so well when I recognized in my own studio back home in Dallas that I could access this connection, this wonderful sense of flow, this connection to some power greater than me here in Dallas. In fact, anywhere I want to be. And since that time, I have practiced accessing that sense of connection when I speak to a group of people, when I do prayer for someone, when I lead my spiritual artist retreats. I'm always seeking that centeredness first, aligning myself with that greater power, that spirit. And so I ask you to recognize that that is your number one, that is your number one goal every single moment of every single day. Your first goal, before you try to get your to-do list checked off, before you try to help another, before you read the news, before you get pulled out of who you are, sit down quietly, do your spiritual practice, and center yourself. And then throughout the day, all day, remember that you can recenter yourself when you're sitting in traffic, <clears throat> when you're waiting for a doctor's appointment, wherever you are. Take a moment to look at those moments of awe, to feel the beauty, to feel who you are, to recognize the joy and love within you and without, and to practice being attached to a spiritual artist. Now, this is just a great lesson for all of us in all points of our life. What I really like and what I'm enjoying about rereading this chapter, which I haven't read in a while, is that I have actually gone ahead and recreated that wonderful scenario. And I have these art retreats in Dallas. And next spring, in May, I'm actually having my first retreat in Santa Fe. I'm recreating that feeling for others that Virginia so lovingly created for me. She created a space where we came together and we enjoyed like-minded people in a tribe where we practice love and centeredness, and just paint it. So I'm so looking forward to my retreat next spring. Uh, you can see that on my website, spiritualartisttoday.com. And I also look forward to my continual retreats here in Dallas at Lake Texoma. Um, they're a little more in a driving distance for you that live in this part of the country. Um, I am so excited that you've committed to doing this with me. We have one more chapter tomorrow. I appreciate you coming on this journey with me in the spiritual artist we are designed to create. And now when you get off of this call or this podcast, I want you to just take a moment. Take a moment to feel your centeredness to all that is. Feel that sense of love. And it's not an intellectual thing you can do. You can't talk yourself into it. You have to learn to feel your way into it. I'll see you tomorrow on the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Thanks again for listening to the Spiritual Artist Podcast. Whether you're watching this show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or iHeartRadio, make sure you choose the subscribe button so that you will receive updates when new segments are released. Most importantly, be still, listen, and know that you are a spiritual artist.